Hi everyone, my name is Jane Brown and I'm the Sage and Tech Manager over at CompuData. In this video, I'll be going over inter-entity transactions within Sage Intact and be telling you a little bit about how the Sage Intact inter-entity functionality can save your organization time and prevent you from having to create manual do-to, do-froms. If you're ever interested in learning more about Sage Intact, you can come out to our blog at computata.com slash blog, where we have various videos and you can filter based on topic and view some of those. To start, I'm gonna come into my Sage Intact environment and I'll come out to company, setup, inter-entity account mapping. So the way that the inter-entity functionality within Sage Intact works is you establish inter-entity receivables and payables between each entity. So for this example, I'm gonna be showing one entity paying a bill on behalf of another we're going to focus on this top line here and the relationship between entity 100 and entity 200. Creating these inter-entity receivable and payable accounts and establishing those relationships between the two entities is how Sage Intact knows how to treat an inter-entity transaction. So what I'll do first is come into my cash management module and take a look at my checking accounts, specifically this account 200. And this is just to show you that account 200 actually belongs to entity 200, USA2. The next thing I'll do here is create a bill. And this bill is going to be a bill for entity 100. So I'll go ahead and select a random vendor here. I'll just put a test bill number in. And then I'll go ahead and populate my entry lines of my bill. So we'll make this bill 700 bucks and we'll select some of our dimensions that are gonna be required here. But where we wanna focus is on location. So this particular bill is going to be tagged to entity 100. Now I'm gonna post my bill to National Grid. And when I'm ready to pay the bill, I'm actually going to select my entity 200 checking account. And remember my bill was tagged to entity 100. So I'll go ahead and select my bill for payment. Now I'm going to come into that posted payment for 700 bucks. That's this one right here. And I'm gonna take a look at what happened in the posting details. So the actual payment itself created a credit to our checking account and a debit to our accounts payable account. The credit to the checking account because we selected our entity 200 checking account hit location two and the debit to accounts payable hit location one which aligned with when we created the bill and tagged it to location one. Since this transaction hit two separate entities what the system did was looked to our inter entity account mapping that we reviewed earlier and determined which inter entity receivable and payable accounts should be hit which is what automatically generated this inter-entity journal, which prevents your organization from having to create a manual do to do from entry to record the inter-entity impacts of this transaction. 